ओके हेलो दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन और एक्चुअली रिवीजन ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक सेक्शन ईएमआरएस ईएमआरसीएस 2020 द मोस्ट अपडेटेड आई जस्ट नीड हेल्प फॉर आई वांट मोस्ट ऑफ देम टू शेयर everyone will read the question and try to guess the answer and then if someone wants to help or give another answer or have any question can just raise hand and i'll open mic for him okay let's start Who will start to me? Can raise hand, please. Who can I start reading? Hello. Hello yes, hello. Baba. Hi. Yes, hi Dr. Dr. Muhammad Ahmed Narik. Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening. So you can start reading the first question please. Said teachers, old man playing football when slips over during tackle. Tackles. His knees painfully immediately following the fall. Several hours later, he noticed that the knee has become swollen following a fall. So he went to the doctor and the situation grew. However, complaint of recurrent pain. On assessment in clinic, you will notice that it is, uh, it is impossible to fully extend the knee. Although the patient is able to do so when asked, what is the most likely injury? You know, I can write in chat as well, if you want. Or just raise hand and answer. Yeah, I think it's a crucial ligament. I think it is. Uh, my T, torn meniscus. Okay. Anyone have? different answer okay perfect torn no one um, sorry torn meniscus yes. exactly uh, okay uh, we just said before i'm i'm just just going to mute all please okay uh, we said before what is the difference between the injury of the meniscus and cruciate ligaments Uh, meniscal injury uh, edema happened a few hours or a few hours later uh, whereas in ligament injury anterior 
crochet or posterior crochet. A, a, a swelling happened immediately. Uh, locking of the knee is a common with meniscal uh, injury. Giving away is a common with crochet ligament. Um, uh, anterior crochet ligament happens with the leg, uh, the knee flexed and it twisted. The most common uh, injury is anterior crochet, while in um, posterior crochet, there is hyper, mostly the trauma is hyper extension of the knee. Okay. 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 Next question. Will you start? Who can I start? Yes, someone just is doing marks. Can I stop, please? Okay, who reads the next question? Dr. Ibrahim. Okay. Uh, a 30 year old man presents with severe pain in the left hip. It has been present on and off for many years. He was born at 39 weeks gestation by emergency cesarean section. After a long obstructed breach delivery, he was slow to walk as a child, as a child was noted to have an uh, antalgic, and antalgic gait, he, he was a frequent attender at the primary care center and the pain uh, dismissed as growing pains. Uh, X-ray show almost complete destruction of the femoral head uh, and the narrow acetabulum. What is the most likely underlying disease uh, process? Think I'll go confused between A and E. Developmental dysplasia on the hip or birth disease. Okay. I can see in chat many have uh, answered it right. Okay. Um, answer is D, D, H. Okay. Just to um, clear what about D, D, H, Persis disease, and slipped upper femoral epiphysis. We have three congenital, or sorry, pediatric injuries uh, happens for the femur head, okay? First one is DDH, and you will have the scenario, like a patient, he will, he will mention, since birth, he has a vaginal delivery or difficult breach delivery. Excuse me. Someone can just mute, uh, just mute himself if there is background. Can someone, Dr. Alaa, can you mute yourself, please? Okay. Again, DDH, you will have in the scenario, the patient has difficult vaginal delivery breach presentation. This is the uh, main feature, which will um, uh, be a posognomonic in your answer for the DDH. The other one is slipped upper femoral epiphysis. He will mention a patient about uh, 13 or 14 years, obese patient, 13 to 14 years. Just, just know this age, it's very common. 
and MRCS follows or, or the exams, uh, they like to give this age 13 to 14. So 13 to 14 obese will be slept upper femur epilepsy. The third is Peirce's disease. You will uh, uh, have a child from six to nine years, mostly they come five or six years, coming with limping and presenting with knee pain. And on examination, the knee is free and he has hip tenderness. Okay, so child five to six years with knee pain and knee is free and hip tenderness will be Peirce's disease. Obese will be, and 13 or 14 years will be slipped upper femur epiphysis and breach delivery or difficult breach delivery, whatever the age, like here, 30 years will be DDH, okay? Okay. Next question. Who's ready? I just want everyone to share so you can remember the questions. Okay, Dr. Isra, you can unmute yourself. some problem in your connection. Okay. Okay, Dr. Tamer. Okay. An 80 years old woman has hip fracture. Her calcium is normal. She has never been given a diagnosis of osteoporosis. Apart from treating the hip fracture, what additional intervention should be considered? Number one, vitamin D and the calcium supplementation alone. B, vitamin D, calcium supplementation and fish phosphonate. C, vitamin D alone. D, calcium supplements alone. E, dexascan. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tamer. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. Do you know? Dr. Tamer, I think he mute himself. Okay. See, always an, an old age patient with hip fracture, it is normally to give the three drugs, vitamin D, calcium, and bisphosphonate. Okay, it is uh, uh, common to give the three together. Okay, so the answer will be vitamin D, calcium supplement, and bisphosphonate. Okay, next question. Dr. Isra, unmute yourself if you don't have any background, any noise background. Dr. Isra, are you ready? Okay, who wants to, to start? Dr. Bea.
who want to share? Okay, Dr. Isra, unmute yourself. Okay, sorry, unmute. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Isra, you can start. Okay, thank you. A uh, 50 years old female sleeps on wet floor, injury her ankle. On examination, she has tenderness over the rattler and medial myulus. X ray stress fuse demonstrate an undisplaced fracture of the distal fibula at the level of the syndesmosis, uh, uh, congrated ankle mortis. What is the most appropriate management? Okay, application of full leg cast, surgical flex, uh, fixation, application of glony plaster cast, application of sand fixator, bed rest, splinting, and traction. Mm. I think application of glow and plaster cast. My answer is okay. Right, application of below knee plaster cast uh, is your uh, answer. Yes, it's right. Um, uh, what type of fracture is that? Okay, it is one. Okay, so it is uh, classified as one of the Weber uh, classification of fracture ankle. Weber A and Weber B and Weber C. Weber B will be below the syndesmosis, uh, syndesmosis, Weber B will be at the syndesmosis, and Weber C will be above the syndesmosis, okay? And everyone has its, um, its management plan according to the stability of the syndesmosis and uh, stability of the ankle mortis joint. So if there is just a fracture and there is no uh, any instability, so it will be um, just application of a knee plaster cast as a conservative treatment. Okay, next question. Okay, Dr. Isra, you can, you can continue if you want. 28 old man complain of long history of shoulder pain and more recently weakness. On examination, active at, at abduction are in passive movement are not. What is the most likely day? Total cuff tear, osteoarthritis, metastatic malignancy, adhesive capsulitis, tendonitis. I think it's a uh, uh, rotator cuff tear. Why you tell uh, rotator cuff tear? Long history uh, of shoulder pain. Okay. Passive but abduction. All, all of this, all of this gives a long history of, uh, uh, of shoulder pain. Third. 
exactly what is uh, what is uh, responsible for the abduction what is the main muscle responsible for the abduction for the starting the abduction supraspinatus and it is and it is one of the rotator cuff muscle supraspinatus the abduction is initiated by the supraspinatus and then uh, there are other muscles like the rotator cuff which uh, help in the uh, abduction but it is uh, started by the supraspinatus exactly so it is one of the uh, rotator cuff muscles cool. which have this component yeah so other other uh, uh, what is whatever metastatic malignancy it is not really nothing in the history or in the question will tell us it is metastatic osteoarthritis also will be uh, or whatever adhesive capsulitis or calcific tendinitis will be mostly restricted mobility all over the joint not in the abduction alone so when he tells you just abduction alone there is a problem in the abduction so he just talking about um special muscle or special group of muscles okay so rotator cuff tear is the right answer Okay, next question. Who will start? Okay. Dr. Uh, Al Mabrook. Dr. Al Mabrook, are you ready? You, you can start. Okay, Dr. Uh, Marcos. A toddler aged two years present to the emergency department with swelling of his leg and is found to have a spiral fracture of the tibia. His mother reports that he had tripped and fallen uh, the previous day, but she had, hadn't noticed any signs of injury at that time. She is single parent with little family support. The child is not uh, on the child protection register. What is the most likely problem? Um, uh, Non-accidental injury. Okay, anyone have any other answer? You can write in chat. Okay. There's delay to come to hospital. This is not accidental injury. Yes, exactly. So the answer is non-accidental injury, right? Um, Dr. Rami, he, he meant uh, by, by non-accidental injury is there is uh, uh, an item of negligence. Negligence or medic, uh, something, uh, med medical legal or negligence that in, in UK, this should be uh, investigated uh, oh. in the hospital by the um, um, some uh, uh, some responsible uh, officer about this problem for child, about the negligence. So uh, here in the question, so to just to differentiate between non-accidental or accidental injury, uh, it will be clear in the in the question. He he's here telling you that she fell, but she didn't notice. She is single parent, little family support. The child has no child protection. He wants to clear for you that he is talking about something legally. Okay. Uh, 
uh, a question Neymar says are so easy. And he wants to clear the question as much as he can. So he wants to tell you, I'm, I'm telling you that he has no protection. She's a single mother. She's a little family support. The child delayed presentation to the uh, uh, hospital. So everything, something like there is something hidden uh, uh, the mother didn't want to say. So it is non-accidental injury. That's all. Because we will we'll face another one with accidental injury, which you will see uh, the mother came directly to the ER, to the hospital, to check the child and say what happened exactly. And the trauma matches with the uh, fracture and with the injury. Okay. Next question. So, okay, Dr. Bea. Uh, 24 years old. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay. 24 years old man sustained a distal radius fracture during a game of rugby. Imaging show a community fracture with involvement of articular surface. What is the most appropriate definitive management? Open reduction in internal fixation, reduction under anesthesia in place and plaster cast, reduction under hematoma block and in place into plaster cast, place onto skeletal traction system, apply a future splint and review in future clinic. That's your answer? My answer will be uh, apply future splint and review in fracture clinic due to the scaphoid fracture. So again, sorry, what's your answer? Apply a few, uh, apply a few, a few uh, sorry, apply a few. Uh, Future splint? Uh, no, uh, is... sorry. Um, um, my answer will be uh, open reduction in internal fixation, sorry. Okay, any other answer? My second answer may be future aspirant, but it is in scaphoid fracture. Here is comminuted fracture of uh, distal radius. Exactly. So one. Okay. So uh, this question, we have two things we have to put in mind. Uh, first thing that in orthopedic and some GIT question and some maybe I think also uh, uh, urology, he will ask you about what is the definite management and sometimes what is the next step of management, okay? So just put in mind these points, it's very crucial in your answer. Sometimes what is the next step would be something simple you have to do before the definite treatment and you will find in your answer the definite and the next step. And sometimes also will ask about the definite treatment and he will put the next step and he will put the definite. So in the definite treatment here, it will be open reduction because it is an fracture involvement of the articular surface, whatever the, uh, the intervention, uh, there will be, whatever the intervention, there will be a misalignment of the fracture. So open reduction, internal fixation is necessary for any interarticular or extended articular fraction. Okay, next question. Okay, I think only three wants to share, no problem. We can start again, Dr. Isra. Okay, uh, 15 years old boy is brought to the clinic by his mother who is concerned that he has a mark overlying his lower spine. On examination, the boy has a batch of hair overlying his lower lumbar spine and a birth mark at the same location. Lower limb neurological examination is normal. What is the most likely causes? Uh, spina bifida occulta, minjumayusil, uh, spondylolisthesis, 
Shorman Mass Disease. Shorman Mass Disease, yeah. Ma ei ole see spine põhida okulta. Okei, anyone has any other answer? No, it's quite easy. It's a spine põhida okulta. Okei. For any other answers or choices? Just he excluded in the question lower limb neurological examination is normal. For everything has a neurological problem. Meningomyelocele, he is 15 years old. Spondylolysis will be more pain, maybe also some neurological symptoms. Shorman's disease, I don't know exactly, and myocele. But here's a complaint just aligned with a patch of hair. So something like uh, so simple. It will be spina bifida occulta. It's so easy. Okay. We want just to go faster. Next question. Okay, Dr. Moros. A six years old, uh, all the female present to the emergency room after tripping on a step. She complained of shoulder pain. Uh, she, on examination, there is a pain on initiating shoulder abduction. What's most the likely diagnosis? Uh, suppressed by natus uh, tear. Okay. Excellent. I think it's also easy question. So presbyneta is the main or is the starter or abductor of the uh, shoulder. Continue. Who wants to share? Okay. Dr. Nashid, okay. Start. Okay. Uh, a 35 year old mechanic is hit by a forklift truck. He sustains a Gastillo and Anderson type 3A fracture of the shaft of left femur. What is the most appropriate course of action? A amputation, B debridement, and external fixation, C open reduction and fixation, D debridement and placement of intramedullary nail and E, debridement and placement of long leg plaster cast. It would be B, debridement and external fixation. Okay, I think you know about um, Gastello, uh, Anderson uh, mm -hmm. pipe three fracture. Anyone don't know what is this classification? Yes, me, I don't know. Fixation of open fracture. Okay, I think I have here some explanation. Okay, this is one of the simplest uh, explanation. Simply, Gastello classification. Sometimes you have questions saying, what is the name of the, um, uh, of the classification of open fractures? Or what is Gastello classification uh, uh, is applied for? So you have to put in mind that gastro classification is one of uh, the open or the most common uh, classification for open fractures. Uh, it is simply for three, uh, uh, three uh, grades. Grade one, a wound, small wound less than one centimeter. Grade two, more than centimeter, but less than 10, 10 centimeter. Grade three, it is more than 10 centimeters, but we have uh, to divide it in 3A, 3B, and 3G, uh, 3A, B, and C. 3A is uh, adduct soft tissue cover, so you don't need for any plastic or any other speciality other than also. Type B, you will don't have adduct soft tissue, so you will need a, a plastic surgeon to share with orthopedic. Type C, 3C, you have a neurovascular bundle injury, mainly vascular and sometimes neurovascular, and you'll have for immediate, immediate intervention 
for a neuro uh, a neurovascular or vascular surgeon. Uh, at least vascular surgeon would be immediately intervention for type C, type 3C open fracture. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because we will have a question asking about type C, type 3C, and he will tell you what is the definite management or what is the next step in management. So we have immediate intervention as well. Okay, next question. Dr. Bea. Dr. Bea, okay. Hi, Dr. Romy. Hi, Dr. Dana. Okay. You want to share? Okay. Okay, start. Uh, 42 years old, the sky falls and impacts on his hand, uh, impact his hand on his sky pool in examination. He is tender uh, in the anatomical snuff box and on bimanual uh, palpation. X-ray with scaphoid uh, views show no evidence of fracture. What is the most appropriate course of action? Admission and surgical debridement, uh, application of uh, tube grip bandage and the fracture clinic review, application of uh, featural splint and the fracture clinic review, admission for uh, open reduction and fixation, this charge with uh, reassurance. Okay. It's your answer. Hello, uh, C, application of splint uh, and the fracture uh, clinic review. Okay. I think all is answering the same. So, fracture is capoid, is not apparent in the first 24 hours, maybe many also a few days later. Okay. Um, so, we just used clinically when we find just tenderness at the site of the fracture or the site of the scaphoid. We go for a splint and follow up after two weeks in the, uh, in the uh, orthopedic clinic. I think we said if you want to, to make sure there is fracture or no, what will you do? What? Dr. Moros, or so? A CT scan uh, or uh, application of uh, thumb spiker for uh, 28 weeks and then review without thumb spiker uh, ordinary x ray. Okay, so we do CT or MRI? Hmm. We do what? MRI? Yearly MRI. MRI. Yes, okay. Mostly uh, joints or intraarticular joint or any involvement for uh, a complicated joint um, structure. MRI will be more clear, especially uh, I mean, it's on, on my uh, orthopedic or some orthopedic, little orthopedic experience. So in something like intraarticular, uh, we would just uh, prefer to do MRI if we can't see if there is fracture or not. Okay, so okay. your answer. Yeah, okay, next question. So Who will go? Continue. Okay, Dr. Moros. 30 years old man, injury his ankle playing football on examination. He has tenderness over post medial and lateral medulloid. That question is uh, again? No, no. X-ray demonstrate a primalular fracture with a displaced distal fibular fracture. At the level of the syndesmotic and, uh, and the fracture of the median malleolus with stellar shift, okay. the anchor has been uh, provisionally reduced and uh, splinted in the emergency department. What is the most appropriate management? Um, uh, surgical fixation. Surgical fixation. Why? By manual fracture. Uh, parameters of, uh, of 
عشان الانستابيليتي اكزاكتلي يو هاف ات از ات ذا ليفل اوف سندسموزس وذ فراكشر اند وذ تيلر شيفت اوكي سو ذس انستابل فراكشر فور اني كونزرفتيف تريتمنت سو سيرجيكال فيكسيشن ويل بي ذا رايت انسر This is the Weber classification. If someone don't know, type A and type B and type C. Type A below the ischemic at the tip of the medial malleolus. Uh, sorry, lateral malleolus. Type B at the level of ischemic And sometimes you ha he have to tell you if the ischemic is. Um, Uh, disrupted or not, so you have to choose your uh, management plan, either just um, plaster cast or surgical fixation. Type 3 above, also you have to tell you there is disruption or no disruption in the uh, fracture or the site of syndesmotic ligament. Okay, next question. Who so wants to, Dr. Nashid? Fadal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A 74 year old male is admitted to the emergency department with a fall. He is known to have rheumatoid arthritis and is on methotrexate and paracetamol. He lives alone in a bungalow and enjoys playing golf. He is independent. Uh, with his ADLs, uh, he complains of left groin pain, therefore has a hip extra which confirms a distressed intracapsular fracture. What is the best course of action? Cemented hemiarthroplasty, uncemented hemiarthroplasty, total hip replacement, dynamic hip screw, intramedullary nail, total hip replacement. Cement. Why? Uh, Because he uh, uh, he is, uh, he can enjoy uh, he can play golf. I mean, activity is there. So uh, uh, yeah, because he has rheumatoid arthritis, which affects his joint. The joint, yes. Uh, uh, so that okay. is joint pathology. So, so. Okay, so he is active, healthy person. There is joint. With uh, lifespan, maybe not so. Uh, Not so uh, many, but uh, not so long. But as he told you in the question, the patient is active, playing golf. So you go direct for total. If Good. he told you the patient is inactive, bed bedridden, or has any other neurological problem, so you go for to cemented hemiarthroplasty. Hemiarthroplasty, exactly. Okay, in the in the UK. Uh, what is the policy? The policy is young patient less than 65 and sometimes less than 70. They go directly for mm. total hip replacement. More than this, he will tell you if he gave you a patient more than 65 or more than 70, he has to tell you if the patient is active or not active. But if he, he didn't mention and he told you the patient is less than 65, okay, you will go direct for total Hip replacement, okay? Okay, okay. Here is exactly what yeah. he said. ADLS of the sole doctor room. Um, he is independent with his ADLS. I don't, I don't know something, maybe abbreviation in UK. About patients mm. uh, living alone or something. But if someone can know, can tell us. I don't know. Actually, okay. just don't concentrate in every word in the question. Just take the key <laughs> keywords that will help you. Okay. 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 That's what we're talking about: young patient and elderly patient here. He means by young patient, maybe say up to 65. They say this is young patient, elderly patient in UK start after 65. Okay.
Okay, next question. We'll go for Dr. Zena. Okay, Dr. Fatima. First time, Dr. Fatima, you can go. Unmute yourself, Dr. Fatima. Okay, obese uh, 12 years old boy referred to his oh, pain. Sorry. In, uh, okay. Go ahead. It's okay. Uh, referred to his pain in the left knee and hip. On examination, he has uh, an antagonist and limitation of internal rotation. His knee has normal range of passive and active movement. What is the most likely diagnosis? Septic arthritis, uh, developmental dysplasia of the hip. Uh, versus disease, osteoarthritis of the hip, or slipped uh, upper femoral epiphysis. Slipped yeah, upper femoral epiphysis. Okay, what is your key keyword here? Lower the passive polar movement. Okay, this question. Okay, this question. This question is one of the questions in the exam. You will just read on the first three or five words and you go direct for yeah. the answer. Okay. Someone is writing, please, can, can just make mm -hmm. an undo, please. Um, obese, 12 year old boy, just read in the, just you read uh, the first four uh, words, go direct for the answer. Mm -hmm. If you find oh, in the answer, me. Mm -hmm. Slept upper femoral epiphysis, mm -hmm. so uh, he is asking okay. about this. Okay, so mm -hmm. you would not find any matching <laughs> question in, in, in your EMRCS all branches except mm -hmm. this one obese 12, 13, obese 14. and female, uh, and young. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. knee pain or hip pain. Go for the question, he, he needs this. This sum of the question will take just can take five seconds, five to ten seconds in the exam and just save uh, more time for other long or uh, uh, difficult question. Okay? okay. Slip upper femur repeats. Okay, next one, Dr. Fatima. Yeah. So uh, a five months uh, baby boy presents with swelling of his right arm and is found to have a spiral fracture of the humerus. He had uh, been in a care of his mother's boyfriend who reported that he had nearly dropped him that day when reaching for his bottle and had inadvertently pulled on his arm to save him. He was initially taken to the emergency department. What is the most likely issue? So this is an accidental fracture. Okay, anyone has any different answer? Okay, what's your keyword here? Basically, he immediately taken to the emergency department. Number yes. one. Yeah. Exactly. So and never the uh, injury matches, yeah, the matching, the injury matches the uh, the accident except okay accidental fracture okay accidental fraction exact uh, really it will be very simple in the exam he will tell you immediately when to the uh, uh, er or went to the hospital and he will mention in he will not mention anything about any negligence this is a single mother uh, the child has no uh, medical uh, uh, cover or, 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 or protection, uh, protection cover or something like this. He will not give any uh, lights for any other uh, words that can um, confuse you on the question. Just he will give you immediately when to the uh, ER, okay? So accidental fracture, okay? Next question, Dr. Um, Dr. Nashid. Okay. A 26-year-old man presents to the emergency 
emergency department with a swelling over his left elbow after a fall on uh, an outstretched hand. On examination, he has tenderness over the proximal part of his forearm and has severely restricted supination and pronation movements. What is the most likely injury? Fracture of the olecranon, fracture of the radial head, galeazy fracture, fracture of the shaft of radius and ulna, fracture of the coronal process. It's B, fracture of the radial head. Exactly. A difficult supination, restricted supination and pronation and will be most, mostly fracture. The... Exactly. Will be fracture of the radial head. Yeah, radial head. Okay, next question. Dr. Uh, Moros. A uh, 19 years old the sportswoman present with knee pain, which is worsening on walking down uh, the stairs and when sitting uh, uh, still. On examination, there is worsening of the quadriceps and uh, pseudo looking of the knee. What's the diagnosis? <clears throat> okay. Chondromalacia uh, uh, patelli. Okay. Chondromalacia. Okay. Anyone has different answer? Okay, exactly. Chondromalacia patelli. What is the, the, the main problem in chondromalacia patelli? The cartilage below the, behind the patella, it actually gets destroyed. So that cartilage is a shock absorber. So whenever there is any movement or like going downstairs or even at rest, there is pain. Okay, what is your key word here? The English is uh, and pseudolog uh, pain uh, during uh, down going downstairs uh, and quadriceps busting is also seen in exactly. Okay, you have two things, uh, it, you, you have to differentiate in according or related to this question. In this question, you will find a young girl present with knee pain, young girl, whatever the age will be, 18, 19, 20. You'll find this question. It came for me in April exam. Uh, the pain increase with walking downstairs and when sitting still. So at rest is this pain, okay? The other one will be the Osgood, Sclatters or Schlatters disease. The pain okay. will be, uh, there is no pain at rest. At rest. Uh, sorry? In all good, there will be no pain at rest. Exactly. Okay. Dr. Remy, can you differentiate between the quadriceps tendon rupture as, as well? Sorry? Uh, can you just tell me like, uh, what would be the key points in the quadriceps tendon rupture? Quadriceps tendon rupture. You have no no question. I I, I didn't pass, I didn't just pass it for any question where quadriceps rupture. But I think you'll find uh, the patella uh, displaced, and you will find displacement of, which will be sorry. Loss of extension of the knee. Exactly. And, uh, and displacement of the patella. Most mostly will be inferiorly or to one side, exactly. But I, I actually I didn't pass for any question. But I think I think uh, loss of extension is one of the main uh, things she will differentiate between. Okay, it, it, the question will be so clear: one pain at rest and the other one pain, uh, no pain at rest, or or uh, or just the patient uh, has no pain during rest, which is also good. Sclater, Sclater's disease. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, just uh, MRCS is 
selected questions you have to to know within two three months to pass the exam uh, but mm -hmm. if you want to study the books or the schedule for uh, made for MRCS students or, or candidates to study to go for the exam really it takes more than one year to finish if you want to study all orthopedic if you want to study or vascular or urology or physiology and pathology really not less than one year to finish and you will not pass the exam because you're gonna be confused in question so you just read every branch totally one time just to know what question he want to ask and what uh, differential diagnosis and what diseases he want to differentiate between and just know it if you want to differentiate between if you find just five answers and you want to know what is the difference between the five answers he just put two or three answers that already you will not face in any other question or or has no share in any question in the uh, MRCS at all. Just keep with the questions uh, written here. Uh, if you want to go for further question, really, you will not finish before the exam and it will be confusing to you. Finish this question, revise two or three times, and then we will do recalls and then go for the exam. So simple to pass with a high mark. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Next question. Who's there? Again, start by Dr. Zena. I think no, no other one wants to share. Okay, 32 years old man falls from uh, scaffolding and sustains an injury to his forearm. Clinical examination and the X-ray shows that he has sustained a radial fracture with dislocation of the distal uh, radio ulnar joint. Uh, what eponymous name is used to describe his injury? Coolies. Okay, so it is fracture radius plus dislocation of radio ulnar joint. Galeazi or Montage fraction? Galeazi. Okay, so yes, Galeazi fracture, but I just want to explain this simply by a mnemonic. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone is writing, please undo his writing so I can explain. Undo, please. Okay. Okay, simply to differentiate between Galeazzi and uh, uh, and Montage fractures. Just simply not to, uh, as non orthopedic to remember. Okay, just forget about the dislocation, but you will find dislocation of the radio ulnar joint, whatever proximal or distal, this will depend on the fracture, how you could know which is which one. Uh, I'm just, I'm drawing the hand. Okay. This, the hand, imagine that it is in the anatomical position with the palm facing up. Okay, and we have, this is the ulna, and this is the radius, okay? Okay, so the radius is lateral, the ulna is medial, okay? So fracture ulna medial will be Montage fracture, M M fracture M radius, M fracture radius lateral will be Galeazzi fracture. Okay, 
both of them will be uh, associated with radio ulnar uh, joint displacement, whatever proximal or distal. So we'll tell you fracture uh, ulna, so ulna medial montage, fracture radius, radius lateral iliasi. Okay. Clear? Clear. Sorry, Dr. Moros, some non or spreadic mana for the other one. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Next question. Someone please do undo for his writing because I can't, I can't remove from here. Yes. Okay, next question, please. Oh, Dr. Um, Fatima, then Dr. Nashid, then Dr. Moros, and so on, okay? <coughs> Start. Dr. Fatima, unmute yourself. Yeah. 24 years old man is brought to emergency department having suffered a crash injury to his forearm. Assessment demonstrate that his arm is tender, red, and swollen. There is a clinical evidence of an ulnar plaque fracture and the patient cannot move his fingers, which is the most appropriate course of action. Application of an external fixation device, close reduction, deprivement, discharge and view in the fracture clinic, and fasciotomy. Fasciotomy? Why? Crush injury? Exactly. Crush. He, he told you suffered from a crash injury to his arm. So what he will complain from? My glubinuria. <clears throat> no, I, I'm just telling, I, I didn't go for the uh, analysis or the sign. Yes, what is the syndrome? Compartment. Compartmental. Compartment syndrome, exactly. Crash injury, hmm. what is the sign of compartment syndrome? Anesthesia paralysis, tender red swollen. Release, pulseless, pain. Okay, uh, for, for, for future part B, okay? Don't say pulseless except at the end. And absence of pulse is in the stage of compartment syndrome after happened, maybe muscle paralysis and muscle damage happened. So the mm. pulse is the last sign to disappear in compartment syndrome, mm. the last sign to disappear. So you will go paracesia, pain, tenderness, swelling, paracesia, tense swelling, and pulse at the end, pulseless or loss of pulse at the end of this. And, and one of the worst sign, one of question, what is the worst sign of compartment syndrome is absence pulse. Absence okay. Pulse. Mm -hmm. So we we'll do emergent fasciotomy, fasciotomy to save the muscles. Exactly. Okay, next question, Dr. Nashid. Unmute yourself, okay. Yeah. Okay. A five-year-old boy presents with a painful limp. The symptoms have been present for eight weeks. Two hip X-rays have been performed and appear normal. What is the best course of action? Arrange a hip ultrasonogram um, USS. Arrange a hip CT scan. Uh, arrange a hip MRI. Arrange a further hip X-ray, discharge and reassure. Uh, arrange a hip MRI. Exactly. What is uh, what's your diagnosis for this patient? Most most diagnosed or what is the uh, your differential diagnosis about a five year boy present with a painful limb? So five is a Parthes disease. Parthes disease. Exactly. Exactly. So any any joint, it's preferred to do an MRI. 
Okay, this is a policy and we notice it in most of our questions and recalls that any joint problem and ask about the investigation will be mostly an MRI, okay? Okay, yes. And eight years old, the symptoms of right knee pain, pain has been present on most occasions. What's that? For the past three months, and the pain typically lasts for sev uh, several hours at a time. On examination, he walks on an antalgic gait and has apparent right leg shortening. What is the most likely diagnosis? Eight years old. <clears throat> First disease. Exactly. No thinking. Just, just an eight-year-old boy, presence of right knee pain. Your eyes will go direct for the question. If you find Pers's disease, most common, just put it in your mind and read quickly the rest of the question. If you find no other thing like sepsis or viral or something like this, go directly for Pers's disease. Okay. okay. Really, it's a very easy question in the exam. DDH versus disease and slip upper femur. If this is just take 10 seconds to finish. Versus disease. Okay. Next question again. Anyone you want to start or start again with Dr. Zena? Can I continue? Um, Dr. Zena. No, we will just go. Dr. Zena, Dr. Fatima, Dr. Nashid, Dr. Moros. Carla, go fast. <clears throat> Boss, all of you. Okay. Are the main participants today? Okay, Thirty years old man admitted overnight following a road traffic accident. He has an open tibial fracture with a twenty centimeter wound and extensive periosteal stripping. He is neurovascular intact. IV antibiotics and wound dressing have been administered in the emergency department. What is the most appropriate course of action? immediate skeletal stabilization and application of negative pressure dressing, skeletal fixation followed by vascular reconstruction, immediate vascular shunt followed by temporary skeletal stabilization and vascular reconstruction, combined skeletal and soft tissue reconstruction on a scheduled operating list, fasciotomy with four compartmental decompression. Uh, skeletal and soft tissue reconstruction or skeletal degradation. Dr. Moros, and another. Uh, I agree with this answer. High yeah. risk of infection and extensive periosteal stripping, and uh, maybe he need uh, uh, skin grafting. Exactly. This is uh, what's classification? Castello what is the name type B. Type type three C three B C D. Uh, no, it's C. There is no B. No. There is no D. No D. And C is, is vascular. 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 Okay, so will be three B. B. Okay, so yes. put in mind this, uh, this question, what is the most appropriate course? He told you here, IV antibiotics and wound dressing have been administered at the emergency department. Okay, so in another question we will face, I don't remember here or in another place maybe he calls, it will be what is the next step and he will not mention antibiotics or dressing or, or anything. So the next step is the Breitman antibiotic uh, in the ER, okay? So just put in mind what is the most appropriate course of action after you give an IV antibiotic and, uh, and one the Breitman. Okay, other, other answer as in vascular shunting, vascular reconstruction, he didn't mention that the patient have any vascular problem. 
Okay. My turn. Salter Harris. Yes. Which of the following uh, types? No, no, no. Who's Dr. Fatima? Yeah. Which of the Sorry. following? Which of the following types of growth plate fractures may have similar grid logical appearances? Uh, option one is Salter Harris type one and five. Two Salter Harris type four and five. Salter Harris type three and five. Salter Harris types one and two and Salter Harris type one and three. Option A, one and five. Exactly. Do you know about Salter Harris, everyone? Yeah. I think it's easy. Uh, um, and the monomic of Salter will be uh, S-A-L-T-E-R, will uh, make it easy. Okay. So one and five, almost always the same and X-ray. Okay, because this is a compression and his is the fracture is through is through the uh, gross plate. One and five. By the way, this is the most question uh, coming in the exam. When I, I was asking who didn't know Salter Harris classification is one of the uh, classification of epiphyseal fractures. Epiphyseal okay. fractures. Children. Okay. So, yes, type one will go through the epiphyseal plates or through the gross plate. Type two, uh, the monomic is um, Salter. Okay. Did you remember? Is above Ls. Okay. Low. So S will be uh, in the gross plate through the gross plate itself. Type two will be above A above the uh, gross plate. Type three will be uh, L below the um, epiphys exactly gross plate, and type four will go through the old structures up, and type five will just be a compression. So it will be in the X-ray, it will be similar to type one. Okay? Okay. Okay. Next question. Dr. Nashid. Yes. A sixty year old man is admitted to the emergency department, emergency room with a fall. He lives in with his wife and still works as a Restaurant manager. He has a past history of benign prostatic hyperplasia and is currently taking tamsulosin. He is otherwise fit and healthy. On examination, there is right hip tenderness on movement in all directions. Uh, hip x ray confirms yes. an intertocanteric fracture. What is the best management option? Cemented hemiarthroplasty, total hip replacement, dynamic hip screw. Parcutaneous spinning and leg traction. Dynamic hip. Exactly. Anyone can understand this question? Anyone wants to ask anything about the fracture of the femur? Okay, for anyone don't know, I'll just say some simple words. Uh, if you have an uh, uh, intercapsular fracture, you'll see it is displaced or non-displaced. Uh, Dr. Moros, uh, if something wrong I'm saying, just you can uh, fix or correct what I say. Uh, enter through enteric, enter capsular fracture. If it is not displaced, sometimes you go for pinning or nailing. Hmm. Okay. If it is displaced, you will go for total or hemi arthroplasty, as we said before. And we have two other fractures, what is called Enter trochanteric fracture through the trochanter. 
and we will go for dynamic hip screw. And we have another one said what's named subtrochanteric fracture, and mostly we go for intramedullary nail. Okay, this is what we uh, what's asked from you on the uh, MRCS. Right, Dr. Moros? Yes. I Professor think this Victor is Rab. simple. Thank you. Anyone can't catch this? Clear again? I can clear many times, no problem with me. Anyone okay. want to say again? Yes, can you? Again? Yes. Oh, again, okay. Okay. Right, just white place here. Okay, this is the um, femur. Okay, okay, and this is the capsule. Capsule, and this is the capsule. Okay. This is the socket. We have many types of fracture. We have one fracture here. We have one fracture here. We have one fracture here. Okay. Number one is intercapsular fracture. If the fracture is not, not displaced, so we we'll go what what we name nailing, nailing or percutaneous pinning or something like this. I don't know more names, but it will be like nails like going like this. Okay. Just okay. to fix the head. This is the first fracture. If it is displaced, so we are cutting the blood supply. So we are afraid for avascular necrosis. So we'll go one of two options, hemiarthroplasty or total hip replacement. That depends on what we said before, young patient or active or old, it is active, he is active or not active, okay? This is the first. Second one is intertrochanteric fracture. Intertrochanteric through Supposed true counter, greater and lesser true counter. What we will do, we will do what is named dynamic hip screw, something like this. And this is here is screw. Okay, just fix this, or maybe a little, little bit lower. Okay, so dynamic hip screw. Sorry. Something would be like this, and the screw will be like this. Okay, this to fix the fracture. It's like L shape or open L shape. That to fix the intertrochanteric fracture. Okay, okay. The, the last one is subtrochanteric fracture, which is number three. Subtrochanteric fracture. What we go with is what we call inter intramedullary nail. From where we go, we go from a place here called trochanteric fossa. We cannulate the nail through the trochanteric fossa to make what we call intramedullary nail. Okay? Got it? Got it or confused? Yes, okay. Thank you, Doctor. Got it or confused? No, okay, okay. Okay. Time. We, we we can send or search for for one picture clear after we finish. Okay. Next question. Who's turn? Dr. Moros or Dr. Nasha? Continue. Dr. Moros, okay.
I'm sorry. You can start, okay. Yep. What's the following fracture names best account for the injury seen in a 13 years old boy who jumped over of a foot wall and land on both feet and the, and the whole imaging show a primary fracture of the right ankle. He puts fracture. Exactly. What's a fracture? Is a fracture of one of the classification of fracture ankle. By Malior fracture, exactly. Okay, next question. Continue. Oh, who's there? Dr. Zena? No. Dr. Nashid? Okay. No, Dr. Zena. Dr. Zena, okay. Okay, an athletic 15 years old boy present with knee pain of three weeks duration. It is worse during activity and uh, settles with the rest. On examination, there is tenderness overlying the tibial tuberosity and an associated swelling at this site. Uh, what is the diagnosis? Chondromalacia patelli, uh, avulsion fracture of the tibial uh, tubercle, uh, uh, scalter disease, quadriceps tendon rupture, and uh, displaced fracture patelli. This is one of the two questions we talked about. Okay. okay. Pain. Young boy. Pain during the activity settles at rest. The pain on the but uh, on the tibia. The other one was the reverse. Pain during rest and going mm -hmm. downstairs, and the pain is at the condylar surface During of the femur, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so chondromatia patella is the pain is on the condylar surface of, on the patellar surface of the um, uh, femur, and osgood clutters or osgood schlatters, the pain is on the tibia, and the pain is more at activity and settles at rest. Okay. okay, you don't need more than this, by the way. So these only two questions come most common about yeah. by these words pain during rest, pain during rest, uh, uh, pain during going stairs, or during rest. One osteomalitia patelli and one osgus stat. Okay, next one. A three years old rugby player falls directly onto his shoulder. There is a pain and swelling of the shoulder joint. The clavicle is prominent and there appears to be a stab deformity. What is the most likely diagnosis? Acromioclavicular joint dislocation, glenohumeral dislocation, sternoclavicular dislocation, supraspinatus so tear, infraspinatus tear. Homeoclavicular joint dislocation. Exactly. Okay, the mode of injury and the step deformity is posognomonic for acromioclavicular joint dislocation. Okay, next question, Dr. Nashid. A four year old boy presents with an abnormal gait. He has a history of Recent viral illness, his WBC white white cell count is 11 and ESR is 30. What is the most likely cause? What is disease? Transient rhinovitis, septic arthritis, slipped upper femoral epiphysis, osteomyelitis, uh, transient rhinovitis. Okay. Why does not septic arthritis? Because the white cell count uh, in septic arthritis, it should be more than 12,000 and ESR exactly. should be more than 40. And in transient synovitis, there should be a preceding history of viral illness. But in septic arthritis, uh, the viral illness history is not that important. Okay, in septic arthritis, the um, symptoms will be more severe 
the pain will That's come okay. the patient will come with severe pain fever okay. um difficult okay. mobility and and non bearing uh, and non um uh, can't bear on his uh, limb also mm-hmm. the complaint will be painful hip or something like this but he is a boy present with abnormal gait so it is just simple okay. simple problem so because you will face okay. another question is septic arthritis the patient is feverish severe pain restricted mobility uh, can't uh, hold in his leg or something like this so uh, severe symptoms will be and tlc will be more than this w white blood cell count so will be septic arthritis but here as he told you viral illness by the way they are very kind persons to tell you in this question you will find history of viral illness to tell you it is a transient okay. sign white okay next question Thirteen-year-old okay. boy fall on outstretched hand and is pulled. Is pulled to the emergency department. He is examined by a doctor and a pony injury is cleared clinically. He represents a week uh, later with pain in his hand. Was most likely diagnosed or unclear injury. Which are the serious? Square foot. Yeah. It it is easy to be missed in the exa- in the uh, okay, scaphoid. I'm sorry. ER. Okay. Other other injuries is is it is difficult to be missed in the uh, in the ER. But he told you, and it's fractures scaphoid is one of the most common missed fractures in the or mm. uh, difficult to be diagnosed at the first 24 hours, and sometimes the patient is sent home. And you have to put in mind during your diagnosis. Fracture radius, impossible. Dislocation, impossible. Rupture of flexor polishes longest tendon. Um, I think it will be a difficulty in the uh, flexion of the fingers. And it can't be missed. Also, penitza fracture is very painful and can't be missed in the exam, in the AER. So, fracture scaphoid is the most possible diagnosis. Okay, next one. Turzena. Should I go? Uh, I think Dr. Zena mute herself. Okay, go Dr. Fatima. 45 years old man has been admitted after being knocked off his bicycle. His ankle is grossly deformed with a bilateral medullary tenderness with severe ankle swelling and tenting of the medial soft tissues. What is the most appropriate initial management? Application of compression dressing and physiotherapy, application of external fixation device, immediate reduction and application of back slap, surgical fixation and application of full black plaster crust. So surgical fixation. Okay, who has another mm. answer? Immediate reduction and immediate reduction and application of back slap. Why? Because of swelling. Because the ankle is firmly deformed. Extending of the medial soft tissues. And after reduction and application, there should be an X-ray done so that there is bimedular tenderness, it's, whether it's a factor or not, and then the definitive management. Uh, in grossly deformed ankle, uh, before an X-ray, uh, we should go for immediate reduction and put us uh, back. To that. What do you think could be the definite management here? What? Uh, if there, uh, if it is a bimedular fracture, then it should be surgical fixation, open, uh, open reduction in general. What do you think? What do you think? It is bimedular in this deformity and tilting, tenting of the, of soft tissue. Do you think it is not a, a bimedular fracture? 
or طيب. disruption of the syndesmotic or or the subtalar joint. Okay, um, the keyword the keyword in this question is what is the A serial ankle spinning. Yeah. Okay. of the medial soft tissues. Initial management. Just concentrate. What is the initial management and what is the definite management? The definite mm -hmm. management for this, he will be surgical mm -hmm. intervention or surgical mm -hmm. fixation. Mm -hmm. But when he asks you what is the initial for ankle trauma, yes, ankle trauma, you have to Reduct first and then go for x ray and then go to decide what is the operation. Okay? Okay. okay. Take care of this question because it's a very common an exam. Very common question. And I think I had it in my exam. Okay. Next one. Okay. Dr. Zena, come back. Okay. A uh, 40 year old uh, marine injures his ankle uh, on an assault course. On examination, he has severely swollen ankle as well as tenderness over uh, the medial malleolus and the proximal uh, fibula. X ray demonstrates medial malleolar fracture, uh, spiral fracture of the proximal uh, fibula, and widening of the uh, syndesmosis. What is the most appropriate definitive management? Surgical fixation, application of ankle boot, application of lower leg plaster cast, application of external uh, fixation device, uh, flow knee amputation. Uh, A, surgical fixation. Because he asked about the definitive management. Not E. I choose A, surgical no. fixation. Okay, so it's easy. I think it's clear now. Mm. Yeah? Yes, yes. So put in your mind what is the definite treatment or what is the uh, uh, initial or treatment yeah. or what is the next step? Another menomic, menomic for the uh, uh, next for the initial is the what is the next step? Okay. Okay. So I didn't ask you what is the fracture of the proximal fibula? No, 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 no. Proxim figure, what is the name of this fracture? Now you have a trauma to the ankle and you, during the examination, you found a fracture in the proximal, proximal fibula. It's a new fracture. It's like a new Okay, okay, okay. It is Mesonerve fracture. Mesonerve. Yeah. Mesonerve fracture, yeah, okay. Mesonerve. This one. Yes. Mesonerve. Mesonerve fracture. Yeah, Mesonerve fracture is very common. And I think we have one question maybe I recall. What is the name of this fracture? It's called Mesonerve fracture. Mesonerve. You have a question in, in part B in ankle station. I, I'm just repeating again. I, I'm repeating what I said last time. In part B, I'm preparing you for part B. You have an ankle examination uh, station. You have to palpate by your hand all the um, fibula till the knee joint for any tenderness. And it is one of the sheet mark and it is one of the uh, uh, points uh, with marks. You can close its mark if you didn't do. Because any ankle trauma, you have to examine all the fibula. Maybe dislocated, maybe fractured. Okay. Next question. Dr. Nashid. Yes. Which of the following is not a typical feature of telepresequinibarus? Adducted and inverted calcinia, medial displacement of the navicular bone. Uh, it is nearly always unilateral, wet shepherd head of talus, tibio, tibio uh, plantar flexion. Uh, 
uh, it is nearly always unilateral because it's 50% of this page is bilateral. Exactly. I think this is the only question coming for the Telepathic Universe. No other question asked about it. So it's something like easy question. Okay. Which of the following statements relating to meniscal tears is false? The <clears throat> True looking over. Most established here will heal with conservative management. Most established years will heal with conservative management. Okay, anyone has any other uh, answer? Okay, right, exactly. Uh, by the way, the meniscus is a vascular cartridge and very common injury and when injured in the um, When injured, uh, mostly it will need for surgical meniscectomy because it will not heal, and I think it is amenable for not amenable for um, suturing or something like this. Okay, and the upper, uh, arthroscopic approach is the most common approach to treat this lesion, these lesions. Okay, next question. Turn again. Okay. Uh, an obese 12 years old boy present with knee pain. Uh, on examination, he has been on internal rotation of the hip. His knee is clinically normal. What is the most appropriate investigation? Uh, what is the diagnosis first? Ultrasound or what? What is the diagnosis first? <laughs> هو احنا قلنا اللي هو obese و young اسمها yes exactly slip upper femur so what will you do CT scan x-ray any other answer Hip X-ray should be X-ray, yeah. It's rocket joint. When we do ultrasound for the hip, it's for development of DDH. Developmental dysplasia. Yeah, in kids. Uh, in the first three months. Yes, exactly. In units, we do it in units. Was preach delivery when we um something scared or afraid from we make any problem for the hip, we just do an ultrasound for the hip. Maybe in the first two, three days, in the first week of uh, of delivery, breach delivery. Uh, we Sometimes some hospitals uh, do uh, ultrasound of the hip to make sure that there is no problem for the hip. And I think CT scan, if you have any problem um, coming or orthopedic problem presentation for the first time, um, start with X-ray. If you can't find anything with X-ray, first six months. Okay, thank you. Ultrasound. Okay, thank oh, okay. you. I, I'm not orthopedic, I'm a general surgeon, so I just have later information on orthopedic. Okay, hip X-ray, we start with hip X-ray. And if we can't find any uh, problem, we go or and still we have pain, we will go for um, MRI. CT MRI mm. or CT. I think he will not give uh, MRI or CT on the same picture. We have this question, by the way, in, in the recalls of January 2020. I was preparing today and I think still pain X-ray, nothing and there is still pain.
Okay, Dr. Zafar, you can open your mic and talk if you want. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, I'm Dr. Duffer, pediatric surgery. Uh, yes, hello. Welcome, I'm arranged for the I'm arranged for the OR, MRCS. For this case, uh, MRI and CT scan should be avoided in the pediatric age groups, especially we, we, when we read the uh, uh, other for the colonic or sub uh, contrast study in the abdomen should be avoided also. We mentioned in, exactly. the, in the next session maybe to explain this. Yes, exactly. However, in practical, especially if we went to work in, in, in a, a good system like the UK, yeah. uh, CT and MRI will be restricted even because in part B, by the way. MRI, anesthesia, and it will done in the, under anesthesia. So. Oh, however, even, even, even in, in, uh, when you go for part B and start yeah. you start to ask you about any problem investigation. If you pass to CT or MRI and there is still some simplest investigation will be done, should be done first. It will be uh, wrong for you, maybe uh, loss marks if you say it like this, because in the UK system, they want to, they searching for two things. First thing is patient safety. So just making um, CT and MRI Last options to um, yes. last option to talk about, and the second thing, all patients are insured, so they want you to treat the patient with the minimal cost, minimal effective cost. Okay. Yes. So, CT and MRI. If you told someone with abdominal pain, CT or MRI, I think they will um, punish you not yes. to go you okay because you are lost their money there, okay? <coughs> okay, next question. Is it my turn? Yeah, Dr. Fatima, okay. A four years old boy presents to emergency department with two days history of fever, difficulty walking, and is unable to weight beer on, right, on the right leg. He has been on oral amoxicillin 20 to 50 milligrams three times a day for a chest infection over the last five days. He's irritable with a temperature of 39.4 degrees. He doesn't allow examination and keep his right hip flexed and adducted. Blood tests are WBC 18.3, CRP is 146, hemoglobin 11.3 grams per deciliter. What is the most likely diagnosis? Okay, without reading the choice, what yeah, do you think? Septic arthritis. Okay, I think it's clear now, yeah? It's yes. very yes. clear. Yes, TLC is 18.3, CRP is very high. Um, he is unable to wait beer, and the main problem is fever and difficult walking, not antalgic gait. There was very simple. Antalgic gate with history of viral infection. Here, difficult walking, unable to wait bearing, fever, high TLC, and high temperature and high CRP. Okay, so I think it's very clear now to differentiate between septic arthritis and um, uh, and transient synovites. Okay, what, what happened here, uh, septic arthritis for this child? He's having chest infection. Yeah, what, right. what is the root of infection for septic arthritis in this patient? It be any type of si um, sinusitis, any infection, any upper respiratory tract. Okay, he has, he has, he has here. Um, What's called? He, I think he mentioned here, amoxicillin for chest infection. So, what is the relation between chest infection and septic arthritis? There is a route of infection, so can be any kind of a respiratory tract infection. Okay, it is normal to have, um, especially something like intraarticular infection, for a person to have any other infection. Okay, 
just to put in your mind, because you have a station in part B and pathology about um, uh, what's I think uh, osteomyelitis, I think so. And you would say, what is the most uh, route of infection for its children for uh, osteomyelitis? It will be hematom hematogenous root, hematogenous root. In the children, hematogenous infection is very common, and it's a very common cause of osteomyelitis. And in young age, ch child, uh, the blood vessels can reach the joint itself and can cause septic arthritis as well as osteomyelitis, okay? So it's very common. That's why he told you a four-year-old boy, a child. Yeah. So because this is hematogenous infection from chest infection, okay? Yes. Just, put it, just put it in your mind for part B. Yes. Hope so, soon. Okay, next question. I think we will go for the last two questions. Dr. Nashid and Dr. Moros. Dr. Nashid. A 12 year old boy who is small for his age presents to the clinic with poor muscular development and hypermobile finger. His x ray shows multiple fractures of the long bone and irregular patches of ossification. What is the most likely diagnosis? Osteogenesis imperfecta, osteoporosis, curvy, osteopetrosis, and osteomalacia. It's osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta. Okay, so hypermobility of fingers, fingers and multiple, multiple fractures, and one the irregular patch. Multiple fractures of long bones and the irregular patch of ossification. So it will go osteogenesis imperfect. Okay. Last question. An otherwise fit 74 years old man present with pain in the right hip following minimal trauma. On examination, he, his leg is shortened and extenuated. Plain film demonstrates a displaced intracapsular fracture of the femoral neck. What's the best course of action? Uh, fit uh, total hip replacement. Anyone has any yeah. other answer? No. Exactly. By the way, um, during uh, illustration and the EMRCS illustrations, uh, he just said uh, that 65 below 65 and above 65, but I'm just telling you the uh, borderline age talking about here is 80 year, below 80 year they consider him active and um, still life, long lifespan. So he will go for total hip and above 80, he should mention for you, he is still active or he is not still active. So as he said, um, 74 year old, years old, year old man. So total hip replacement will be uh, more suitable for him. Okay, uh, thank you. For today, we almost finished about um, 45 questions out of 95, about half or so. And I'll try to continue orthopedic tomorrow, inshallah. So uh, anyone want to ask about any question? Uh, I can so close. Yes, OK. Uh, excuse me. Can I ask about uh, tomorrow? We're we focusing on the other, uh, continue on the orthopedics, just orthopedics or what? Okay, um, tomorrow, inshallah, I think tomorrow, after tomorrow, I think tomorrow, inshallah, we'll continue to finish orthopedic because we finished half orthopedic yeah. and we will finish the rest of orthopedic by tomorrow. So I, I close the, um, uh, the recording first. Yeah.